So there's this rumor going around YouTube once again that theism or not is a binary state. Really? Okay, let's do this. There is a tendency here on YouTube for people to coin catchphrases that neatly encapsulate certain ideals. One such catchphrase, with which I wholeheartedly agree by the way, is don't run on automatic, think. The brain is, I am sure you'll agree, a highly complex organ which, if exercised properly, can yield such epicness as music, quantum physics, art, medicine, philosophy, astrophysics, and the rest of the natural sciences, altruism, and yes, ultimately the very information highway and other technologies with which we're communicating now. However, when left to stagnate, uninformed, or intently focused on a singular issue, it has a tendency to become entrenched within certain patterns, or, for the want of a better analogy, fixes neural pathways in such a way as to render the operator potentially limited by the extent of those pathways. Put another way, as soon as the rational mind stops examining all concepts with the full arsenal of critical thinking skills available to it, or rejects evidence on the basis of inflexible definitions pertaining to the admissibility of said evidence, then it becomes prey to both dogma and the inevitable facepalm. For example, we're making positive claims such as There is only one way to not be an atheist, and that's to believe in God or gods. A lot of people don't like to hear this. They think that being an atheist is being a disbeliever, not just a non-believer. But the choices are theist or not a theist. It's not a spectrum, but a binary set. One has to be prepared for the possibility that, should someone produce evidence to the contrary, for example, a third option being possible, or highlighting an implicit contradiction within the set itself, one may indeed have to reassess the claim. Such a situation may arise when encountering arguments presented by detractors or even supporters or peers able to demonstrate a flaw in one's logic, put forward additional depths to concepts hitherto unexplored, or simply identifying a false dichotomy, such as that which raises a spectre before us. Let us first examine the word theist. The term theist is generally associated with those who follow a theology, a doctrine of ideologies based on the teachings of ancestors that forms the foundation of a composite worldview. In the case of the Abrahamics, these theologies accept the existence of a singular deity, a monotheistic god who, historically and culturally, has replaced the polytheistic cultures that preceded. There are also other theologies still in existence today that ascribe to multiple deities, for example, Hinduism. Okay, now let's look at the word atheist. And yes, I'm happy to use a definition that includes not a theist and non-belief in regardless of whether that non-belief is active or passive. Regardless of any dictionary definition chosen, the end result is a worldview that does not ascribe to either the existence of a deity or deities, nor follows a set doctrine or theology. Unless, of course, there is such a thing as 
the atheist's code? Nah, I didn't think so. Okay, so let's throw in some critical thinking skills and examine the potential for any position that does not conveniently fit into the aforementioned criteria. And right away we see, tucked over there in a corner, another popular theological subset, the deist position. Here is a worldview that does ascribe to the possible existence of a deity, however abstract the description, yet does not adhere to an associated theology, nor holds to a common doctrine. Semantically theist in one aspect of the definitions, non-theist in another. Now let's take a look at, say, Buddhism. Here we have a theological worldview that includes, harmoniously, I might add, a subset that believes in a deity and others that don't. Focusing on those that don't for a moment, we see that it is indeed possible to occupy a fourth position that follows common doctrine or theology without actually ascribing to the existence of an associated deity. Once again, seemingly a semantics contradiction, albeit with the other combination. Another example of this may be certain Native American traditions, which, while they ascribe to certain ancestral doctrines and core spiritual beliefs, do not necessarily concede the existence of any deities per se. Finally, and this one really throws the cat in among the pigeons, there exists a potential fifth position, namely that of the apathist, one who has so little interest in the whole concept that even contemplation of it never dawns on them. And obviously you won't find any of them engaged in the debates here on YouTube or anywhere else for that matter. They are that disinterested. I'm sure everyone knows at least one person with whom this entire topic has never even arisen. So in conclusion, far from this being the binary set that some would dogmatically cling to in the formation of battle lines against the stupid, I hope I have shown that it is not only feasible but actually commonplace for individuals to be able to hold to a position that is neither fully atheist nor fully theist. That it is, indeed, possible to hold to a variety of stances that either bridge the two ends of this spectrum, for it is a spectrum, or to one which exhibits a total detachment altogether. I hope I've also been able to demonstrate that it is entirely possible to express disagreement with a high-profile peer in a way that is neither trollish nor inherently stupid. I would further posit that human diversity is such that one of the few appropriate applications of the term binary set is with regards education. There are the educated, those who seek ever increasing knowledge and a fuller understanding, both of themselves and all that exists around them, and there are the uneducated, those who seek comfort in the security of dogmatic adherence to whatever ideology, theology, or level of education that they rely upon for their world view. But even the insertion of knowledge can be rendered meaningless if the engine isn't started and gears not engaged. One parting observation, if you'll permit me to abuse and mangle the car metaphor a little further, when engaging those gears, it is often more exciting and rewarding to drive forward and expand into new territories than to circle one's yard or reverse into the same face palm. <coughs> On that note, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you have a good one. And for the sake of all that is wholesome and animated, Think, people. Yeah. That was great.